Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor and you can also find my blogs on ospreystrategic.org as well as stockcharts.com. Wow, so we're still in a bit of a downtrend and I think the real question this week is 27% off a deal. So what I want to cover off is what happens in a bear market and then we have to think about um, a few triggers that go on as the price goes lower and and what happens is margin calls and forced selling and uh, people who just can't handle the pressure anymore and then they sell into it and and so we're looking for what are we looking for we're looking for volume to kind of have climactic um, ending we're looking for um, charts to start to refuse to go lower all of that kind of stuff but even in my small trading community I'm already seeing lots of traders ready to jump in Um, they're they're all very excited that this is um, on sale and and while I am too I think what's more important is the charts have a different tone and complexion here than we've seen in a long time and we don't have the Fed who basically helps us every time the market pulls back so we've we've got more of a problem than we normally have and and we're so used to literally oh you know markets down hard on Friday by Monday the Fed comes out with some sort of announcement to do a twist or a you know, just jawboning the the market so it stops falling. We really haven't had that. We are trying to crush inflation, and while we're doing that, the market might be pro- part of the crushing. So, anyway, um, it can't get any creaser. It can't get any cheaper, can it? And and when what we want to know is obviously where is the low. Nobody knows that until you're. Um, through the other side but what we also know is we've got some chart setup data that is trending and now what we're looking for is an end of those trends and a trend to improve so in a way what we were looking for to mark the top we can also use a lot of those tools to help mark the bottom so I want to cover off some of those ideas today and um, I I think one of the biggest things that um, the the clients of Osprey Strategic like is that we have a, a methodology for getting into the market, a methodology for getting out of the market in a timely basis. And then what you should see is your account stair step. So you you were out of the market, you go into the market and you rise up and then you go out of the market and you go into the market and you rise up. And you try to do that over and over and over. And if you've read the book Reminiscence of a Stock Trader, Uh, the story of Jesse Livermore. Um, It goes through a lot of the lessons that that Jesse learned and I feel like I've I've lived those lessons, made those mistakes and then tried to improve it over time. So one of the things that I think is just as important as being in the market is being out of the market and uh, letting your head set and don't have the big pressure of down pushes working on you and then when the market does turn you've got lots of cash available to go back in. Now the real question is is what's your time horizon? So if it's only a 10% pullback who cares? Um, If it's a 20% pullback, we care more. Now it's a 30% pullback. So the real question is, when do we start to care and what do we notice for a difference? And then on the way back up again, we also need to make notes on what worked and what didn't work and how the market's changing. So anyway, we're going to try that. If you've got any questions, you can head over to um, ospreystrategic.org and we have an annual membership over there at $860, less than 20 bucks a week. And, and the whole idea is that it'll just um, give you a newsletter every week that summarizes the big picture and then uh, a video that comes out and I go through a lot of the charts. I go through currencies and bonds and, and equities and commodities. And maybe all of that's not your bailiwick, but I do try to highlight which parts of the video we're covering off what information. And so if you wanted to, you could just scan to the parts you like. But the idea is to help you understand the macro. And I can't tell you the number of people that think, I'm in a good stock, it won't go down. When you're in a bear market, 
everything goes down. And so, um, so far energy and materials have held up and they're starting to show cracks. Um, bear markets just don't leave any stone unturned. So we all have to be ready for the change. Anyway, okay, let's get over into the charts. I want to cover off a couple of ideas first. First of all, natural gas is up 100% on the year. I feel like I've even missed part of that, a big part of that move. It's just been so sudden. It's literally a virtual move higher um, where you just shoot up. It's more like a rocket than an airplane taking off. Um, I think the gasoline and the uh, West Texas crude and all that kind of stuff I was prepared for and we were watching it migrate higher. Um, we're still starting to see the oil stocks not necessarily follow. So that gap is bothering me a little bit. But what we are starting to see now is look at this. Silver is down 4% on the year. Silver miners are down 13%. Rare earth metals, we, I think we all thought that would be a big one, positive one because of the move to um, alternative fuels like electric. Um, the problem is, is they're not going up. And when they're not going up, we really need to be aware of that. Look at lithium. This lithium ETF is down 20%. Tesla is a part of that, so it's dragging it down, but it was also the helper on the way up. But look at lumber down here, down 27%, and really the worst commodity going right now. And so I know a lot of people are looking at lumber as a favorable place to be, but for me, when I look at the wood ETF, W-O-O-D, um, it, it's not going higher. And so... Why isn't it? And lumber's got this big kind of topping formation on it. And when we say a topping formation, what do we mean? Well, normally in an uptrend, we have a, have a series of higher highs and higher lows. Well, what happens is when something starts to make a top is it makes a low and then it makes a higher high. But now the low doesn't make a higher low. It either comes down to the old low or it makes a lower low. And so then you're on notice that something's changing. And then what we start to see is on the next rally, we don't have enough energy to get up to take out the high. And then we come rolling down. And as we do that, we end up making this topping structure where, where we've changed from higher highs and higher lows to lower highs and lower lows. And it's that subtle change as it's building that we need to be aware of. And I think um, for the most part, I think people are pretty aware that we've kind of built one of those right now in the markets. Okay, so looking around the world, I think what's interesting, um, the Japan market, I don't even know how to value it anymore because the central bank buys so many shares there, it's just hard to understand if it even trades. What do you do, just phone the central bank and ask them to buy your shares? I, I don't know how that works. Anyway, it's quite an odd situation, but when we look around the world, S&P's down 13%, NASDAQ's down 22 South Korea's down 11 and they have a lot of semiconductor chips. Canada's only down 2%, a little bit of a commodity outlet there. London is a commodity stock exchange um, for the most part. Brazil is as well. So even these commodity um, stock markets are flat to down year to date. Um, although oil and gas and, and metals have had a pretty good spring. And then Germany's down 13%. But I think what's really noticeable is literally the NASDAQ is the worst market of the whole bunch. And so a lot of people are thinking the selling is over. Um, the point I would make is that we still have lots of stocks with high multiples, not even to earnings, but to sales. Um, so it's that that real overvaluation and as the air comes back out we think wow gee it's already 50 percent off but it's 50 percent off from a very inflated place and so we start to drop down quite a bit harder anyway so looking around the world year to date um the nasdaq market has been hit the hardest now france hong kong um, germany uh, all in around the S&P 500, close enough uh, for government work. And then we got the Shanghai, same idea. So the bigger markets um, that we're seeing around the world are also down about the same. I would say India, with its huge population, is still doing pretty well, only down 6% year-to-date. So that's a good one. Now, the other thing I want to show is the different sectors 
and what's going on. So here's semiconductors down 25%, communications down 23 And this was as of last Friday, not Monday, Tuesday. Um, it, it's nicer to kind of just do a hard stamp on a weekend um, to get everything clear in your mind. And it's not a, uh, I'll call it a moving regularly. You kind of got a, a weekend close to work with. So what I'm thinking here is real estate is really starting to turn down fast. You can see it's five day performance is dropping, but um, our three month performance was four and a half percent and our year to date performance is 13 um, percent. So it fell early in January and then hasn't fallen that much over the last two or three months. But when we look at consumer discretionary, uh, here's retail in here, communications, semiconductors, all of these have been hit very hard. Here's technology down 19%, retail down 23 You can see the areas that have really taken it on the chin. Now, consumer staples, yes, you could have moved into it. I think I still have the question, okay, so you move into consumer staples to be not hit by the bear market. The problem is cash works just as well and you don't have the risk. So it's one of the questions I have is why more people don't just step out to cash. Why rotate into staples if you know you're in a big down market hoping that the area you're in won't get pulled down? I think that's just hard. Now utilities are up 1%. Again, you've got a VIX at 32 and your utilities are up 1%. That sounds pretty good. The real problem is, is it's, you know, it could rotate tomorrow and be down 5% and you've sat in there to get a, a 2 or 3% dividend. So for me, I always like to just kind of move to cash. Now, the one area that has worked remarkably well this year has been energy. And it's even uh, a couple of weeks ago, I started to sell energy, um, I still think it's breaking down. It might hold up better than I think, but this is a big bear market and it's really coming to grips across everything. Okay, let's jump over into the chart. Whoops, um, that wasn't what I wanted. Let's jump over into the charts. So what I want to point out is the NASDAQ's down 27% um, to the lows we hit on Monday. And then we need a 37% rally just to get us back to where we were in November. That's obviously pretty hard to do. So we got some work cut out for us there. I'm going to jump up and show you breadth. And the reason I want to go through this um, part of it is to help understand the importance of looking at breadth often. So what we saw as the market was rising up was we, we had a rising market and, and the breadth had started to go flat. Maybe I'll just add another year here. Um, so breadth was rising up until February. That was the big SPAC bubble. And then we started to see it go sideways to down slightly. And the market kept going up, so we weren't too concerned. This is getting a little weaker. And then in November, it actually made a step change lower. And that's actually when we topped out the market. But that sudden move lower was really kind of um, subtle when you're sitting there watching it every week. Does this move look any different than this move? The real major complexion change that we started to see, notice how these were little pullbacks all the way along. And then we started to see these really big pullbacks in terms of advanced decline data. And to me, that's a noticeable change. So this is a two-week moving average of the advanced decline information for the NASDAQ. And all of a sudden we have these big, big collections of very weak markets. And so as the market's pulling down, we try to rally briefly and then we fail. We're still having these big gatherings. So guess what we need to start seeing to happen in order to reverse this? Obviously we need to see this downtrend reverse and start to turn higher. So if we unwind this chart even more, and get the COVID low in there. Um, and again, the COVID low was really fast, right? It happened so quick. Um, it pulled down and then we bounced out of there. And so we started to make higher highs and higher lows. That would be a clue that something's starting to change. We're not there yet. So um, look at this. Our, our number of advancers over decliners on any given day here are the worst it's been for the last couple of years. That's pretty significant when you consider um, you know, what the, 
all everything we went through. Now, the one thing I will say is this um, advanced decline line also got a lot of new issues in 2021 when we had the big SPAC boom where they were bringing all these stocks to market. So we probably have some more stocks, so that probably adds to the pressure. Now, the second type of information we have is the NASDAQ high-low data. We have the same thing for the New York Stock Exchange. But one of the things that's really interesting is when you can't get back above the zero line, which is what started in December, and I wrote right on the chart here, still means caution because we're not getting up to the prior highs. Now, we rallied in December and it looked like we might be able to break out right at the end of the year. Sure enough, we just got to zero and then we started to roll over. When we unwind this tape, whatever, go back, let's try to get 08 in there. The one thing that I notice when we're in um, a weak market is see how it can't get back above zero on the rallies. And then all of a sudden in 09, in the March pull down, we came back. And then we literally start to change the complexion here where we're starting to have more advancers, decliners. And this is actually showing up in early April, um, which is about a month after the low. Now, you know, you would you would be getting in here just as you're breaking above, I'll call it the, the three-month period from October to January, then the pullback down to March. And now you're taking out the January highs in April. And again, that was a good place to get on board. If you were waiting um, back in 09 and you got in around March the 9th or whatever, obviously you got some of the best thrust ever. Well, we just had that same experience off COVID lows. He came down, made a big sudden move higher. Now we're pushing down and I know a lot of people are trying to time the low. And the real question is, do you need to do that or can we just wait? And the one perspective that I'd like to show is that our high-low data, the two-week moving average, is some of the worst, way worse than 08. And only on the COVID low did we kind of get this bad. So we're in a really ugly market here. And most people are just assuming it's no big deal. It's just another day at the office. We can turn higher. One of the things that happened on the COVID lows, see how we started, or on the 08, 09 lows, we started to make higher lows here. We haven't even started to do that. We're making lower lows still. So that's a pretty interesting uh, pain threshold that we're in. And we haven't even started walking our way out of that yet. So um, there's a lot of people, I think, that are working hard to time the low. And if they're good traders, they're going to be able to trade a bear market rally. But what we want to watch for is the market to try and start improving. And and who knows, maybe it goes all the way to the moon uh, from here and, and we turn around. Well, we'll at least have the data of the advanced decline line turning around, the high-low data turning around. All of that information will start to turn positive and we can get back into the market rather than trying to guess the day of the low because that's been um, expensive if you've tried to do it. Okay, um, and I've tried to put a few trades on. Sure enough, got stopped out of most of them um, without a profit. And so you're you're literally trying, and then you get thrown out and thrown out and thrown out. And it's just the I'll call it the school of Nicks, where you just keep um, taking little pieces of profit out of your account or little pieces of uh, capital out of your account. So the New York. Uh, advanced decline lines doing the same thing, right? Here's the New York stock market. We were going sideways for a long time, broke to a new low, rallied up, couldn't get back to the prior highs, fell apart. Look what the advanced decline line was doing. It was breaking down, going lower, making new lows. Well, we're right on the new lows here. So was this the low? Was this the low? Was this the low? Okay, we had a three-week rally. Okay, was this the low? All the way down. And, and so that's the problem that we get into when we're trying to pick the low. We just keep getting washed out. Um, sorry, I keep bouncing that up. Okay. Um, anyway, so those are some ideas. And again, we had the same issue on the New York uh, stock market for the high-low. Look at this. Um, and the New York has a slightly different line. It's, uh, I'll call it 100 instead of zero. Um, so I've I've got a zero line and a 100 line, and it, every now and then it'll bounce up to the 100, but you can see 
it did this back in 2020 and um, started to bounce out of here. It took a while as you came off the lows to get new highs. Um, and in 2018, we had the tariff tussle. We pulled down. We really couldn't rally at all. So the market was doing okay, but wasn't going anywhere. And then all of a sudden, we really started to break down. So these are all good clues that we're starting to struggle and, and again, once you're going higher and now you stop going higher, it's these clues that on the bounces in December, we, we couldn't make higher highs and, and we were starting to have a lot less stocks make new highs. So all of that data comes together to give us a, a clue. So that's how we use the data. Now we're looking at it in hindsight. Um, my clients were probably following it in real time, I'd like to say. And then what what we want to do is use that data to help us get back in as well. So it's not just a one-way street. We're going to look for some of these turning points and start to see it. So this is a, a measurement by Alexander Elder, the high-low five data. And what does that mean? Basically, you take the new highs minus new lows and you keep a five-day moving average running. And this is a really nice indicator what you see here is even we're in one of the bigger pullbacks going on here. So let's just say we're in 2015. Well, again, we we hit a commodity low here in early 2016 and bounced out of there. This was 2018, and of course we dropped. The stock market had fallen about 20 percent before we started to go back higher, and now we've had a couple of double pullbacks. These double pullbacks, we don't have any other ones on here except in 08, 09, and then back in, in 99, 2000, look at this. It, it didn't even give us those same sorts of readings that we're getting now. So we're in a pretty ugly place, and I think most people are overlooking exactly how difficult this market um, really is and, and how much turning we need to do. Okay, um, so so that's the broader picture, right? That's the, the macro view of how we would use this advanced decline breadth. I will say the, the one thing that I've got um, that interests me, the McClellan oscillators, I have two different views. I have one where I draw a line and it doesn't, it, it's dropping. But what I like to use rather than the line is actually an interesting one um, where I use a candlestick. And what I find the most interesting, notice how this continues to decline, making lower highs, lower lows. What is that? That's called a downtrend. And then eventually we start to make this reversal higher. So this was out of the 2018 lows. And we, we turn around. And so this summation index is the sum of what the daily is doing. And the daily reading is here. So we're, we're negative, whatever, 60 today. So that comes right off the total we had before. And we come keep summing this. Now we're back at one of these very severe levels. And, and But what I like to see, see how this momentum just shows this water falling lower? This is how the bottom kind of came in to get the, the early March rally. We stopped having such big selling momentum um, before we turned higher. And the same thing works on the NASDAQ, where you can just see, and, and don't just look at the size of the red bars, but look at the gaps included here. We're moving down hard. What we'd like to see is at least some sort of a pause near the lows to give us an idea that we might be able to turn and go higher. And, and that would be a better clue for us. So again, let's reverse engineer these indicators. And they helped us find the top. Now they're helping us with the road down, we're still on it. There's no real change here. And again, the market's been quite weird because we have big down days, down 4 or 5%, and then we end up with the indexes down 1% or 2% on the week. But we're doing that week after week after week after week. So it's very difficult trading. But in the end, like NASDAQ, I think, was down 1.25% last week. The S&P was down 02 And yet, we lived through some, you know, some wild swings with the Fed meeting up and the after the Fed meeting, things fell hard. The whippiness is really hard. So anyway, the reason that we use this breadth data as technicians is to help us use it to help find lows. And right now, like literally, it could be the pinpoint of the low, but we don't have any data starting to reverse yet. And so if we were starting to reverse, and let's just say tomorrow starts to turn up, the chart's going to turn. 
do we need to be in near the lowest 2%? No. But what we'd like to do is start to enter as it starts to improve. I will say the one thing on this chart, we're back down to some of the worst levels that we get to um, before the market rallies. Now, the Fed came in here, the Fed came in here, the Fed came in here. Um, so we're, we're back at some pretty low levels, some of the worst levels in 20 years. So we're near a low, that, that's for sure. But the real question is, how long does that low last and how much higher can we go? So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You can also see the recording on Stock Church TV YouTube page. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.